Hey troops, General J. Smith here, back with another LEGO Star Wars 2016 Somerset Review. And this time I am back with the clone turbo tank, set number 75151, ages 9 to 14, comes with 903 pieces, and is retained for £100 or $110. So, it is the same price as the Rebel Combat Frigate, although it has 30 pieces less. So, as many people have said before, this is somewhat overpriced. For 900 pieces, £100, $110, that is pretty significant. Now, for a clone turbo tank, £100 is not that big of a deal. The previous 2010 clone turbo tank, I believe, was about £100. In fact, it might have been even cheaper than that, I'm not entirely sure. But that was considerably larger. That had a considerable amount more to it. It did come with an ATRT, just as this one does, but it also came with a, a large weapons pack. It came with a lot more, well, I'm not going to say detail or colour, but just a, a lot more, really. Now, I suppose you could say in many places this is more compact. But overall, it's just larger and it feels more intimidating. And to see on a mock, I still, I've got to be honest, I'll say it flat out, I prefer the Tank 10 one. But I think that's not even big of a surprise. I think everyone does, really. When this was first announced, I was pretty hyped. I love the Clone Tank. It is one of my favourite sets to date. And before we got the pictures, I was so hyped about it. I think a lot of people were to finally get another Clone Tank. I thought it would be amazing. Then we got this, and we revealed how small it was, we saw the minifigures, which granted are pretty cool I guess, we don't have them, but most of us have the majority of these minifigures, and the ATR and ATRT is pretty cool, but you know, you know, it's good, okay, um, but yeah, so overall, I'll be flat out, it's a good set, but a disappointing set, it could have been great, but it's good. Kind of like Batman vs Superman, actually. <laughs> a little reference there. Anyway, that being said, I'm sorry to go too long into the intro. So, let's get started. Starting off, we have... Not Kylie Mundi, who are you? Luminara Unduli. Luminara Unduli was one of the leading members of the Jedi Council. Even though we didn't see her a lot during Episode 3, we did see a fair amount during the Clone Wars. I like to consider her as one of those, if you will, secondary Jedi, which we didn't see a massive amount of. We saw her in the Genosha's arc, and you could say, I guess, the Barasofi arc. Of course, she was a big thing there, because if you're unaware, she is Barasofi's uh, Jedi Master, or at least was until, you know, she turned to the dark side. Spoiler alert. <laughs> anyway, so the minifigure itself then, this is actually slightly different from previous versions. Showing your previous version of uh, Luminara Unduli, you can see a lot of black here and of course the um the mold for her not helmet but her hood type thing is the same but the printing and the color of it is significantly different this one is a much more of a darker brown whereas this one is completely black no cape of course uh and yeah no back printing so this one is a vast improvement over previous versions and i am glad they brought back and not a lot of people are a lot of people would prefer that we got new minifigures i'm actually glad that we got her because i like to build up my jedi army i guess my jedi collection you yeah. know um so i do think she's a very very nice addition i think she's a vast improvement the fabric of the cape is, you know, somewhat different, of course, as, as usual. You can see the back printing there, pretty nice. Obviously, the last one we've got no back printing, as I said, but yeah, very good there. Her um, head and hands are different colour, they're not just flesh colour. I don't remember anyone to compare it to right now, but hopefully you can tell they are slightly, if you will, greener? Kind of more sand colour? I don't really know how to describe it. Really, if you have a Luminar and Dooley, it's the same uh, tone as this one, I believe. Or actually, maybe it's a little lighter. Maybe it's the tiniest bit lighter. Or maybe that's just my eyes playing tricks on me. I don't really know. But nonetheless, it's extremely similar. The lightsaber is very cool, of course. But yeah, overall, very nice Jedi. I'm glad we got her in the set. And again, a lot of people would prefer we didn't. A lot of people prefer that we um, like got new minifigures. I, however, am very glad we got her. Perhaps we could have swapped out some of the battle droids for them, but I'll go more into that in a second. So there we have Luminar and Julie, very nice minifigure, I'm glad we got it, and if you do not have her from previous sets, which is understandable, I mean, some of these sets that she came in were pretty rare and, you know, old, if you don't have her, this is a good way to pick her up, so, yeah. Let's move now on to the second Je Jedi, Quinlan Voss. Quinlan Voss is, in my opinion, a very interesting character. Even though we only saw him in one episode of The Clone Wars, and I don't think we really saw him in any of the films, other than maybe, like, tiny little snapshots in the corner, Quinlan Voss has had a main role in many comics and books. Personally, while I've not read them, I have heard a lot about the stories, and in my opinion, he's actually extremely interesting. I love his character. He's what you would call a grey Jedi, in terms of, similar to Qui-Gon Jinn, he doesn't really follow the Jedi Order to the letter. He's not a Sith by any means, and of course, he's Force-sensitive with a lightsaber, and he's not an enemy to the Jedi whatsoever, but, for example, the Jedi wanted to assassinate Count Dooku, which isn't really the Jedi way, but nonetheless, uh, and they sent Quinlan Voss, because Quinlan Voss is the sort of Jedi who would do that. Hopefully you understand what I mean then, when I say he's kind of a grey Jedi, and for that reason, I think he is a very interesting character. He has fought, and, well, it's funny, he's actually fought Count Dooku, but he's also worked for him at one point, as well as having a, a love relationship with a Sarge Ventress, so it's, yeah, 
basically very interesting character if you're unaware of him. Anyway, so we got him as a new Mr. Vega. We have had him once before in the Republic Frigate, as you can see there, the Clone Wars version. Uh, as I said in that review, who oh, like three years ago or something, I actually like this minifigure very much, and it's very, very cool the fact they brought, uh, brought an expanded universe character into the Clone Wars. In fact, you may realize he was in one episode of the Clone Wars. The only reason he was there, funny enough, was because fans wanted him to be there. So there you go. Anyway, so this version of him is pretty um, simply designed, not a massive amount. It did kind of turn 11, but still pretty cool, and I like the fact we had a new Jedi. This one is obviously vastly improved. You'll notice one thing the hair is significantly longer, really. It goes all the way down. I think that is more accurate. Again, I don't really read the comics that much, so I don't particularly know. But uh, this one, I feel, is a lot more accurate. The printing on the legs and the torso is significantly improved. We do have some back printing, of course, taking off his hair. Very nice. He, of course, has a double-sided face as well. This is more his angry face, you know. He comes with the beard, he comes with all that. His skin tone, as you probably tell, is slightly darker. Not like full-on sort of Mace Windu, but somewhat more orange, I suppose you would call, than most. Almost like he's got spray tan or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's got the black gloves and just... The entire uh, mini thing, in my opinion, is a very nice addition. I do very much enjoy him. I think he's a very, very cool minifigure. And I'm glad we got him as well. Again, a lot of people have been saying they want different minifigures. And while the rest of them, I do kind of agree. These two Jedi, even though we haven't got them before, I think are vast improvements. And I am glad we got them. So if you don't have Queen of Voss, if you didn't get the Republic Frigate, then I would recommend you pick up this set partially for him. Because he's a very nice addition to your Jedi army. Saying that, let's move now on to Commander Gree. We have received Clone Command Degree in previous sets. I can't remember the first version he came in, but we have got this variant of him, the Phase 2 version, in the 80 AP from 2014, which wasn't too long ago, to be honest. It was with the Winter sets, so it's only like two, uh, two and a half years ago, which, to be honest with you, isn't a massive amount of time. Saying that, however, I guess it is cool to get him again. I mean, he only came with that one set, but I think that one set was pretty popular, so it's not as if you probably don't have him. If you're into the Clone Wars, then you almost definitely got him in some way. Saying that, however, his printing is still very nice. As I said in that review haul a long time ago, his printing is still very, very good, very, very nice. Of course, for the time for 2014, it was significantly better, but nonetheless, printing the camo, very, very good, still holds up. And I still use them, by the way, in uh, stop motions or mocks. So, and I've got other Clone Army custom, you know, custom type things. So, you know, the fact that he can hold up against customs is very, very nice on Lego's part. So, you've got the camo um, kind of thing down there. On his legs, very nice. He comes with the binoculars, of course. Unfortunately, as with all these Phase 2 helmets, they don't come with a hole in the um, side. Don't know why, but they don't. He also has the kind of green visor type thing for more scope. Of course, we saw him mainly in the movies, at least, uh, in Episode 3, where he got beheaded by Yoda. Sorry about that. Taking off his helmet, he does have the usual clone face. Nothing too special there. But yeah, we've received him before. Still, his printing does hold up, and it's very, very nice. I guess it's cool to get him. To be honest with you, since I've already got him, it's not the biggest deal to me. I guess I would have preferred a new minifigure, perhaps a slightly improved version of a different commander. Maybe a commander we haven't had before, such as Phase 2 Commander Cody or something. But, you know, nonetheless, he's pretty cool, and if you don't have him, it's a very good way to get him. But still, I think most people have him now, so I don't really know the massive point of him. Again, as I've said five times now, he's a cool minifigure. I'm glad we got him, but, you know, it could have been a bit better. That being said, let's now move on to the Elite Corpse Clone Trooper. Just like Command Degree, we have received the Elite Corpse Clone Trooper before. I believe in a previous set, it was called the 41st Elite Corpse, but it seems they've kind of downgraded him now. Sorry about that. Anyway, so we received him mainly in the, of course, the Kashyyyk Battle Pack from 2014 as well, as well as a droid gunship. So he is definitely not a rare minifigure by any means. I mean, technically, he did come in two sets, but they were very common. I think the vast majority of people, if you wanted to get them, you almost definitely got them. I think a lot of people got that Battle Pack. Oh, we got a lot of them. But yeah, so to be honest with you, I would have rather a different minifigure. Yeah, as always, it's always nice to build your army. And you know, I guess if you're going to put him in a set, this is an appropriate set. But still, I mean, if it's this guy or a new minifigure, let's be honest, Lego, we know who we want. Okay, we do not need more of these guys. I mean, unless you're going to give us like six of them, then that'd be cool. But if you're just going to give us one in a set this sort of size with this kind of price tag, you're going to have to do a little bit in terms of minifigures. Nonetheless, if you haven't um, got the 2014 Battle Pack somehow, maybe you just got to Lego like a year ago, then this guy, of course, very, very nice. Just like Command Agreed, this printing still holds up. And if you build an army of these, which you probably did if you got that Battle Pack, then it is definitely not going to let you down for some time because the printing, the camera is still very, very nice all around, as usual. The clone face, not really distinguished in any way, but nonetheless. Uh, so, yeah, all very, very good. I'm liking it. 
yeah, <laughs> that's more is it then. Let's go on to the last two minifigures, Battle Droids. I think we can zoom through these and then we'll get into the actual clone turbo tank. So to finish off, we have a couple of Battle Droids, and these guys are of course nothing new. The Battle Droid design is very simple. We've had it since 1999. Hasn't really changed other than the straight arm. But to be honest with you, I don't really know how they would change it other than just adding new colours. Because the design is simple, it's effective, it doesn't really need to be changed. It'd be cool if we had movable legs, that'd be nice, you know, move them independently. But I guess they'd just be kind of too flimsy, and they'd probably snap quite easily if you did that. So, nonetheless... I don't really find it go much here, it's called Battle Droids. I did realise, however, when I was buying this, that we haven't bought a lot of Battle Droids recently, or at least we haven't seen a lot of Battle Droids in a lot of sets recently. I guess it's more because of Force Awakens and more original sets came out, and I've been buying more original sets. But, nonetheless, it seems like the Clone Wars is being phased out definitely, because we have not seen as many, nearly as many Battle Droids. Nonetheless, uh, that's it then, don't really have to go much into that, that's a couple of Battle Droids, nice to get them, I guess it's always nice to add to your collection, if you have any sort of prequel or Clone Wars collection, you've almost got, definitely got a small army of these, even if you don't even mean to, because they're just in so many sets, but still, nice little guys, all well and good, let's now go into the set itself. Just like the 2010 version, this clone turbo tank also comes with an ATRT, which is a very nice addition because we only got one in the previous clone turbo tank, which is quite a shame because, in my opinion, I'm a big fan of this particular ATRT. Now, we have had many ATRTs in the past. I've said the word ATRT quite a lot of times. We've had many in the past, and this one is the only one that's even remotely size accurate. Most, most of them are quite large things. I personally thought this would be a good thing to get in a battle pack, but we never unfortunately did. So, it's nice that we do get another one, even if this one is considerably bulkier than the previous one. One, in fact, actually, it's less size accurate because, technically speaking, even this one is a bit too large because a person is meant to come out about, about to this um, height of the feet, like um, the height of the legs, basically. So technically, even this one's a bit bigger than it's meant to be, so of course this one is even larger than that. Personally, I do prefer the cannon on this one. I prefer a few little elements. The legs, I do prefer on this one, because they are opposable. This one is a lot more prone to falling over. Although this cannon, as I said, does look pretty terrible, to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of it. There is a lot more protection here. It feels more, a lot more like an ATRT. And to be honest with you, I hope that these go cheaply separately, because one thing I couldn't find with these, I couldn't find any of these to buy separately, like a BrickLink or anything. It didn't feel like anyone was selling these separately, which is just a shame. So I hope someone does end up sending more of these separately because I would very much like to get a few probably change the cannon on the front but other than that it is a very nice little vehicle got some detail back here and of course you can see the guy would hold on to these very nice but there you go let's now move on to the clone turbo tank we have a brick separator of course with all the larger sets as well as four of these spring load shooters which of course go in the four slots there are also two like uh, on the inside like for spares and I'll show you them in a second as I've stated a few times on my YouTube channel this is one of my favorite vehicles being mainly because because it's such a sort of intimidation type tank. Unlike the ATTE, this thing is huge. Like in the actual Star Wars lore, it is insanely massive. One of these wheels is easily bigger than a person. And while, of course, we haven't had a size accurate clone turbo tank, which by the way would be amazing, it's still nice to get a clone turbo tank with some decent size to it. This one, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Compared to Tran 10 one and even Tran 5 one this particular clone turbo tank is just nowhere near that kind of scale. Now, yes, granted, a lot of people are saying, oh, it's more compact and it's still got a number of pieces. You know, it's getting, getting on a thousand pieces. But still, I mean, ugh, I don't massively care unless, you know, assuming I can hold it properly, like assuming it's pretty sturdy, I don't need it to be incredibly compact, incredibly powerful. I want it to look the part more than anything. So assuming it won't fall apart in my hands, I don't really mind. That being said, let's go now on the features. A little thing so you may wonder about the clone turbo tank if you're unaware is which end it drives from. I talked about this in my 2010 clone turbo tank review, but officially it doesn't really have a particular end. It can drive from either end similar to a train. You can see cockpit on both sides, although a lot of people tend to put this as the front bit because it's considerably larger. Starting at the front then, uh, this opens up like so, as does this fold down, although that's the first that folds. The uh, 2010 one folds a lot further, that's another thing, although, oh, I suppose you can move it down further, you just got to move the cannons, which is kind of annoying, but still. Uh, anyway, so yeah, looking inside there, I'm sorry, maybe, maybe a little dark, but um, I'm just going to fold these out, hang on, okay, uh, so you can see there you've got the steering wheel, of course, and you've got a few little things, there's no studs in there, and I think that's a sticker, so, you know, just got to put that on, that's a little annoying, but still, no real space back there, which is unfortunate, which I guess was a thing with Turn 10 one as well, because I do like my clone turbo tanks to have space in the middle as well, because I like to be a sort of troop transport, almost like a mobile gunship, but still, as you can see, one thing I can really tell is when you look at the size of it, comparing it to a Town 10 one, if you're in a true size comparison, 
you see here, it's got three sort of of these, uh, you know, two by one sort of see-through things, yeah? It's only got two there, and that is the thing you really notice, and it's, so if you really want a specific comparison of why this one's considerably larger, there you go, this one has three on the front, this one also has three on the front, however, it has three on the sides as well, I mean, the fronts, you know, you really don't notice the size difference that much until you look at the specific parts of the set, I mean, the front bits are just, oh my word, they're just in different leagues. I mean, this could entirely fit within here. So, yeah, moving that to the side, though, let's move now on to more of the features. As you can tell, the turn 10 one, you moved out these things. Like, you move out sort of this section, open it up like that. With this one, however, you turn the entire side into a panel, which you fold down. I've got to be honest, I'm not 100% on this, because for mocks and stop motions, it does not look accurate whatsoever. Of course, it's not accurate. I much prefer the way this one folds out, where you just open this flap, and this bit falls down, not the entire thing. So, I've got to be honest, Lego, I'm not a fan of, you know, combining this with these two side panels as well. Saying that, you can see on the side here, you've got the um, spring low shooter, of course. You've got some mechanism in there, I will show you how that works. This is actually a feature that does not come in 20 turn, but it does come in the turn, uh, turn 5 version, where you turn this knob, of course you can do it either side, you can see both the wound, and this folds up, or well, not folds up, but you know, comes up. You can also pull it up, by the way. You can push it down or up, it works either way, by the way. Um, but yeah, so a guy is meant to stand there who is extremely exposed, by the way. I mean, this is somewhat accurate to the actual film, but still, he's extremely exposed when he was up there. It's meant to be a scouting tower, so yeah, but you can push it down very simply. That is a very cool, that's a nice feature. I'm glad we got it. We didn't get that on the uh, Clone Wars version, so that's cool. In there, however, uh, I believe you can put the ATRT in there or something. It looks like you can put something in there, and I don't really know what else you'd put in there. This is a thing, I, I, I really don't know why they're doing this. I mean, I think in the Tower 5 version, we did get a significant amount of space in the middle. But the, even the 2010 version, we didn't get that much space. But you could still put sort of plates in there. And I guess you could remove this and put plates. But with these uh, support things here, you really don't get that much space in this set in the middle whatsoever. And I'm not happy about that. Uh, as you can see here, the suspension and other things like that for the middle wheels and things. But yeah, we've got, of course, got a handle here, which is, you know, nice, kind of expected, you know. It's always good to get a handle. You can see if I'm just holding it, the front is a bit heavier. But to be honest with you, I don't really know where else they put it. I don't really think they could put it here, so, you know, I can't really fault them for putting the handle in the place they did. We have up here the cannon, which it looks like someone's meant to hold it. You can see these handles. However, I don't really know how they would. It just spins on its own, by the way. It doesn't have a mechanism. Because there's nothing here to, you know, actually control it. At least with 2010 one, there was no handle in terms of it looked like it just just functioned as a normal cannon, as you can see sort of there in the background, I'm sorry it's kind of off screen but still. Uh, this one however, it looks kind of almost odd if you don't have someone there holding it, and how are they meant to do it, it just looks weird quite frankly. These on the side are meant to be rocket launchers I believe, I'm not entirely sure by the actual law, but um, that's another thing you can compare, looking at the size of those particular ones compared to the size of these ones, I mean the size is just... Utterly insane, I can't do this really. This is very difficult to try and carry two chrome turbo tanks at one time, but still. Uh, as I said, these open up like simple. These also open up. You've got a crate here, very similar to 2010 one. I can't get it out. Come on, son. There we go. There's not more. There is stuff in here. you got some... We've got some studs and a grenade, which seems like such a random thing to put in there. But yeah, so the compartment is also a lot smaller. In the previous one, we've got multiple weapons and stuff. I know I'm comparing it to the old one a lot, but let's be honest, Lego. You know, you kind of expected people to compare it to the old ones, of course, you know. Uh, on this side, then, we have the two sort of spring load, not spring load shooters, the uh, two flick stud shooter things and of course it spins around just like that as well I'm not a big fan of this design either I feel like I'm really bashing this set but I mean on the previous one I, can, I keep comparing it on the previous one we did have a, a man like an actual space for a man to go there now that technique wasn't accurate because of course the actual vehicle in Star Wars is significantly larger but still it, it, it was cool this one I'm just I don't like it quite frankly it's too flat it just looks kind of weird it looks like one of those guns you maybe have on the side it looks more like it would suit on the side here but I don't know. Anyway, so moving towards the back then, this does open up, and these, well, actually, no, these don't move. These don't fold out at all, so that's kind of insane. This one's a little flimsy, it seems. I don't know what my building was. Anyway, so trying to open up like that, you can see here, that is a sticker, I believe? Or maybe it's printed. No, I think it's a sticker. I believe it's a sticker. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. You can see a cup there, that's kind of cool. You've got a one-man seat in the previous clone turbo tank, as I said again. You've got two seats in the back, and in fact, you could put a third, and I did, actually. So, yeah, quite frankly, overall, yeah, significantly smaller. The wheels then also are very nice. Uh, 
The treads are pretty cool, but to be honest, once again, I probably prefer the Chan 10 treads. It's not the biggest deal. I mean, it's, you know, these ones are decent, but it's all good. The middle one has suspension, which is pretty nice, and it does turn pretty well. All that good stuff. Although, to be honest with you, it seems a little harder to turn it, or is that just me? I don't even know. It seems a little more stiff. Not just me. But yeah, underneath, as I said, it does hold it very well, so you could... I, oh, gosh. I, I guess you can't. Sorry, excuse me. You can't hold it from that direction, because I just broke it. But, um, yeah... So it does hold up very well, you know, you can drop it. Okay, so moving back to the clone turbo tank. I'm terribly sorry about that, guys. I genuinely thought it was going to stay up, but there you go. Just look, having a little look at the detail on the top now. We've got some lights there. The detailing is pretty nice. I will give it that. The detailing is uh, superior than it is on the 2010 version. Uh, and, of course, we've got some little detailing here. And just, you know, a few different colours, which is nice. But overall, it's so much smaller. And it is sturdier, despite what you just saw. It is actually a sturdier set and, you know, it is more difficult to take apart. Which, I guess, you could say is a good thing or a bad thing, depending on really your opinion. I mean, it is Lego, so in one level you do want to take it apart, but... Who knows? That's it, the end of the set. Let's move on to the instruction manual, the box, and conclude this <laughs> review. I don't know how it went so wrong, guys. So, instruction manual, we get one with this particular set. I guess with the larger sets, they're moving more into just the realms of making one instruction manual rather than multiples, considering the size. But, uh, yeah, so looking at the back then, as we've seen with all these other instruction manuals, we get each set from this particular wave, not including the Rebel Combat Frigate or the Rogue One sets. Uh, we've got every minifigure as well. Very nice, very cool. We, of course, have that Force Awakens thing in the back. We've got all the features here as I went over. There we go. Handle. No shooter. You've got command degree, you can sit there, and of course the suspension, which you can move either way. And I guess the ATRT is meant to go in there, but you've got to fold it up and stuff. And of course we've got that tower as well, which also moves up. We've got two pages of inventory, as you would expect. And then, like, well, I would say, you know, oh, hang on, 126 pages of build, give or take. So, yeah, I can't quite remember how long this took me to build. I did build it, like, whew, a month, two months ago. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Um, but I'm sure it took me, like, maybe a couple hours or something along those lines. Maybe one hour and a half. I don't remember how I remember. But, yeah, instruction manual, pretty simple. It reminds me so very much of the Rebel Combat Frigate because, of course, this is a very similar in terms of piece count. So it would be very similar in terms of the instruction manual. But, yeah, moving on to the box then. The box is pretty standard, as I said in the Rebel Combat Review, if you've seen that, it's the same size as that kind of a box, and really what you'd expect. Going over the features, once again, we have suspension, the ATRT does fit in there, um, the, you know, tower comes up, got green there, we've got the spring layer shooters, and we've got the, um, that handle, there we go. Um, but yeah, another thing I just want to point out, you know, this particular ATRC, you um, see less of the person, which I actually like, I do like that feature, because with the previous ATRC in the 2010 one, it was kind of, he still seems a bit exposed, so yeah, I actually do like this ATRC, maybe a bit more, and I would like to get more, even if it's not entirely accurate, but yeah, as you can see there, by the way, on the top command degree, is apparently meant to be holding that and shooting back, that just looks ridiculous in my personal opinion. Looking up then, uh, we've got the dimensions of it here, very nice, very cool, and of course got the minifigures on the side, or not the side, but you know, the top, uh, and yeah, hard diggity, that is it to the review, I hope you enjoyed it, this was definitely a different kind of review, <laughs> really, I feel like I bashed the set the entire time, I honestly never thought that when we got a new clone turbo tank, I'd spend the entire review just bashing it, I honestly thought that would never happen, but still, let's go and conclude my clone turbo tank review. Thank you for watching my review of the Clone Turbo Tank 75151. Despite the fact I think this review was a bit of a disaster, if you did enjoy it, please do give it a like. It would be very much appreciated. I mean, this set's already been out like two months, so you've probably seen other reviews, which is my excuse to why this review wasn't exactly my best. That being said, and despite the fact that I have been seen to be bashing this set the entire review, it's not actually a bad set. I just feel, compared to the 2010 one, and even Time 5 one, it just doesn't sound out of the par. And if the 2010 one was released, you know, like 2015, then it's not that big of an issue, but to be honest with you, it was released six years ago, this is six years worth of advanced Lego building techniques, and this is kind of the best we've got, and just, well, pretty much everything about it, I'm afraid, is uh, not as good as the 2010 one, I honestly cannot think of, like, any way this is superior, maybe the minifigures are superior, but even the minifigures, the only real ones that are any value are the two ones, because the other ones you might already have, you know, the ATRT is pretty good, I guess, but again, I mean, if you've got 2010 one, you'll have this one, and there's not a massive amount of difference, not enough difference to warrant you getting another one, so, yeah, 
That being said, it is a good set. I will give it a solid 7 out of 10, which sounds pretty high considering, again, I bashed it the entire review. But, when I say I'm bashing it, it's more a case of it's just not that good compared to the previous versions, which I guess is a bit of an insult to any sort of set when it's six years more advanced, but as a set, as a Lego set on its own, it's not horrible, okay, and it could be used in mocks or stop motions. If you do not have the previous versions, I understand it may be quite costly to get them because the previous versions will go to hundreds of pounds, so yes, this is a Oops. <laughs> this is a good alternative, you know, you're not going to go wrong, and I mean, if this came down in price, if you found a discount, I might even recommend getting a couple, you know, because there's nothing wrong with getting a few Chronotopa tanks. Some people, of course, may not mention your names, have like five, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it then to my review. I hope you did enjoy it, despite how much of a disaster thing it was. Nonetheless... There we go. That is pretty much it to my entire summer wave. I hope to be getting some of the Rogue One sets, but then I think that'll be it then to every single review of this year. But of course, we don't know what happens, you know. As I've said many years in the past, oh, I've said, oh, I'm going to get all the sets, and it doesn't even happen. So I don't even know if I'll get any of them. God knows what will happen. But until I do, this is it to all the sets I have already got. So, hope you enjoyed all my reviews for the summer. That is it, and I will see you next time with more videos to come. There's a lot more videos to come. Trust me, over the next few weeks, there'll be videos coming out of the wazoo, okay? Thank you for watching for the third time, and I will see you next time with another new video. Bye, troops.